Welcome. This is Sharon Harris, author of The Art of War for Creatives. Thank you for being here. Not only do we have to be aware of the forces around us, but also the forces within our minds that may stop us from reaching our full potential. So please, find a quiet spot, get into a comfortable position, and close your eyes. As you listen, relax, reflect, and refrain as I read quotes from The Art of War by Sun Tzu. Let's begin. The art of war is of vital importance to the state. It is a matter of life and death, a road either to safety or to ruin. Hence, it is a subject of inquiry which can on no account be neglected. There are not more than five musical notes, yet the combinations of these five give rise to more melodies than can ever be heard. There are not more than five primary colors, yet in combination, they produce more hues than can ever be seen. A leader leads by example, not by force. To know your enemy, you must become your enemy. The wise warrior avoids the battle. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Be extremely subtle, even to the point of formlessness. Be extremely mysterious, even to the point of soundlessness. Thereby, you can be the director of the opponent's fate. To win 100 victories in 100 battles is not the acme of skill. To subdue the enemy without fighting is the acme of skill. The whole secret lies in confusing the enemy so that he cannot fathom our real intent. Supreme excellence consists of breaking the enemy's resistance without fighting. Move swift as the wind and closely formed as the wood. Attack like the fire, and be still as the mountain. Bravery without forethought causes a man to fight blindly and desperately like a mad bull. Such an opponent must not be encountered with brute force, but may be lured into an ambush and slain. When you surround an army, leave an outlet free. Do not press a desperate foe too hard. Engage people with what they expect. It is what they are able to discern and confirms their projections. It settles them into predictable patterns of response, occupying their minds while you wait for the extraordinary moment that which they cannot anticipate. Do not repeat tactics which have gained you one victory, but let your methods be regulated by the infinite variety of circumstances. Supreme excellence consists of breaking the enemy's resistance without fighting. 
if he sends reinforcements everywhere, he will everywhere be weak. Begin by seizing something which your opponent holds dear. Then he will be amenable to your will. Strategy without tactics is the slowest route to victory. Tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. It is easy to love your friend but sometimes the hardest lesson to learn is to love your enemy. When the enemy is relaxed, make them toil. When full, starve them. When settled, make them move. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself, but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. Ponder and deliberate before you make a move. The quality of decision is like the well-timed swoop of a falcon, which enables it to strike and destroy its victim. Let your plans be dark and impenetrable as night. Quickness is the essence of the war. Rewards for good service should not be deferred a single day. Move not unless you see an advantage. Use not your troops unless there is something to be gained. Fight not unless the position is critical. Victorious warriors win first and then go to war, while defeated warriors go to war first and then seek to win. Opportunities multiply as they are seized. Invincibility lies in the defense, the possibility of victory in the attack. The greatest victory is that which requires no battle. There is no instance of a nation benefiting from prolonged warfare. So, in war, the way is to avoid what is strong and strike at what is weak. Anger may in time change to gladness. Vexation may be succeeded by content. But a kingdom that has once been destroyed,
can never come again into being, nor can the dead ever be brought back to life. When the enemy is relaxed, make them toil. When full, starve them. When settled, make them move. When strong, avoid them. If of high morale, depress them. Seem humble to fill them with conceit. If at ease, exhaust them. If united, separate them. Attack their weaknesses. Emerge to their surprise. All warfare is based on deception. Hence, when able to attack, we must seem unable. When using our forces, we must seem inactive. When we are near, we must make the enemy believe we are far away. When far away, we must make him believe we are near. Treat your men as you would your own beloved sons, and they will follow you into the deepest Thus, we may know that there are five essentials for victory. He will win who knows when to fight and when not to fight. He will win who knows how to handle both superior and inferior forces. He will win whose army is animated by the same spirit throughout all its ranks. He will win who prepared himself, waits to take the enemy unprepared. He will win who has military capacity and is not interfered with by the sovereign. This concludes the guided portion of this meditation. Please be still, and if you like, stay until the end. We will meet again very soon. Thank you for being here, and thank you for being.